Hello and welcome to the Skating Lesson presents Olympian 360. I'm Dave Lees and I'm thrilled to welcome 2004 Olympic champion Kyle Schufeld. Kyle, welcome back to the show. Hello, thanks for having me back. <laughs> yeah, so I thought it's only appropriate to get a Canadian's perspective on the U.S. Gymnastics Championships from this weekend in Boston. You could be the Elfie figure uh, <laughs> on American TV here. So... Let's break down the championships. Uh, the last time we spoke, it was just in 2016. Simone Biles was getting ready uh, mm -hmm. to go uh, to the Olympics in Rio. And in case you've been living under a rock, Simone is back. And they say what? she's better than ever. Um, <laughs> she's back? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know, know that. that. No, no, I'm just, just joking. joking. Yeah, she's, she's better, better than, than ever, man. She, she looks, looks incredible. incredible. So what is your take on, on Simone's back better than ever what to you, what specifically looks so much stronger to you than it did two years ago so i think number one simone looks a little more joyful during her gymnastics she seems to be a little more present to me and doesn't seem to be so concerned like there's not the marta sitting there you know on her shoulder anymore and she seems to be a little bit more free i love what she said about um her gymnastics being more on her ter her terms now She's not afraid. She has nothing to lose. It's now it's just challenging her own potential. And I, I kind of see that she's having fun doing gymnastics again. So I really like that. Um, I love that she's added some difficulty on floor and um, vault that she's doing the chain for her first vault, which used to be the questionable second vault. Now it looks so easy. But what I'm most impressed with, David, with Simone is her improvement on bars. Um, the addition of skills, but it's the little things that I notice it's the extension in her handstands, her body position as she's swinging into the dismount. I can really see uh, Laurent and Cecile's um, influence in her gymnastics, especially on uneven bars. And I just think it's really cool. Not a lot of athletes have the courage to come back after being as successful as she was. And so to come back into that realm and be vulnerable, but then to really like hit it with an exclamation mark right off the top at classics, uh, I'm, I'm incredibly impressed with her. So how, how much do you think of a mental hurdle it is to compete again, obviously knowing that she's expected to win? She knows she has a buffer. I mean, you competed again after you won an Olympic title on floor. Did you, you know, how do you get past that mind game of thinking you have to be perfect, you have to win all the time? Well, I don't know if some people really do ever get past that. I can distinctly remember an experience that I had at the 2006 World Championships. Um, I didn't come back in 2005 to compete because I was actually – I, I didn't have enough training time and, and all of a sudden you're really afraid of like what everyone's going to think of you because you're the one who's doing the chasing and then all of a sudden now you're being chased. But in 2006 at the Worlds, I remember standing there ready to compete on floor and my mind was like, don't screw up. Rather than in 2004 where I was like, make it happen, right? I was really embracing that and so that, that mindset and it seems like Simone... I mean, just the way in which she talks about Carey Perry and the way that the crisis that USA Gymnastics is in right now, she she doesn't give a shit, man. She's like, ah, you need me. I know you need me. I'm great. I'm having fun at gymnastics. And um, I, it doesn't seem to me that she's afraid of losing anything. And I think that can be the mentality of a lot of Olympic champions coming back. You saw it with Nasty and with Sean. It was like, it was... Um, this kind of tumultuous period where they're up there on the beam and you know, you kind of get the feeling like they feel like they have to be there and it's not for them anymore. It's for everybody else. Mm -hmm. Now I want to know when you're watching, you mentioned Marta, how big of a role do you think Marta will have? Maybe not for Simone, especially, but for the other girls, you know, they've had such, they've had such a consistency and we've seen the U S girls do well, but maybe not have the same dominance that they have for each girl at each competition. So how, you know, how much of an impact do you think changing from a Marta over Larry to Tom Forrester? And how long do you think it would take to even see that kind of an impact? I think I'm already, I already see it from the outside looking in. And, you know, as a, as a broadcaster now, um, I've, I've done a lot of reflection on the way that I played a role in the way that the, the environment was. It was an environment based on fear. And I think that a lot of us as, as, as broadcasters and as fans of the sport really kind of, we, we emphasized how great these young women were at performing under pressure. But what we didn't realize was that it was really fear-based, you know, that they were going into these competitions 
Um, like Simone has said in a few interviews that I really like, she said, now it's about faith and it's not about fear. And I think that, um, yeah, so I've done some reflection there as a broadcaster saying how amazing these young women are and they can perform under pressure and they can always hit. But it was certainly, I, I guess now we're coming to the realization that it was groomed in an environment that wasn't, it wasn't the right environment. So now, um, seeing the way that it is moving forward, I think these young women don't appear to be fearful of making mistakes. It, they're more so embracing the possibility of what can be. And I think that's the way the sport needs to shift. That's the cultural shift that needs to happen. Um, sure, you can win medals and you can get results. <laughs> Clearly, the team did it with Marta as the leader. But it was a place that there was they were silenced. And it was a place where they were hitting routines because they were too afraid to miss their routines. And I think that now the shift needs to happen within that cultural um, perspective. The athletes need to be able to walk into a competition ready to embrace their excellence rather than be afraid and tight and be uh, scared of, of, of making mistakes. Does that make sense? What do you think? Yeah, I was wondering if you think that the how much can change? I think I was wondering where it seems like they're moving in a, in a, in a good direction, a positive direction. But there's still a lot of the coaches who are from the old system and are from the old way of thinking. And then because there's a lot of depth, as we move closer to the Olympics and the stakes become higher, I guess, how do you keep it so that it doesn't become so fear-based? Because theoretically, then mistakes will start to have realistic impacts. I mean, not. Right. I mean, certain competitions, they would act like, you know, a Pacific Rim or an American Cup where making a mistake there would be so detrimental to an athlete's Olympic champs, which are seriously not realistic. You know, if you make one mistake, it doesn't ruin your entire career. You know, I think if you make a mistake in a nationals or Olympic trials, obviously it's a little bit more uh, serious. I guess, how do you, how do you balance that? Well, and that's the way it used to be, right? If you made a mistake, you're written off. And now I think the system needs to embrace that if you make a mistake, you learn from it and you get the opportunity to try again. The team is still going to be picked on the people who are most reliable, the ones that can hit their routines in most situ in, in the most pressure situations. They're gonna, you have to create that pressure. You can't just be like, okay, everyone gets gummy bears today because this is fun. No, this is still a serious sport. Um, but I think rather than have the athletes feel instantly shameful of themselves when they make a mistake and that their worth is worth nothing because they made the mistake, that's the cultural shift that I think needs to happen. And I think we're going to see that more and more. I mean, you you bring up a really great point. The Olympic Games, there's so much depth in the U.S. and there's only four spots on that team. I'm pretty sure the U.S. is going to have six spots for the Olympics based on the qualifications, the way that's all going to kind of go down. But... Um, yeah, the stakes are going to be really, really high. Um, but I hope within the culture it can be a place where it's not cutthroat, <laughs> where the best, the cream of the crop are just going to rise and, and the team is going to be selected in that way. I don't know what that answer is. And that's a really great point. And I think that we as fans and we as broadcasters and we as people that love the sport of gymnastics need to ensure that um, we're, we're keeping the organization and the coaches accountable, you know, that, and that we're cheering for the athletes because they're the ones at the end of the day whose dream it is to be an Olympic, an Olympian. And so at the end of the day, it's the athletes that we need to support and it's the athletes that we need to show um, that consideration and that kindness to. When you, when you talk about the preparation, I'm curious because there was always so much talk about preparation, readiness, and, and Marta's kind of survivor tactics making, you know, you know, mountains out of every little molehill possible. Now I'm curious because it mm. seems like the athletes who were chosen were the ones who did well under that kind of a situation. Now, mm -hmm. if they still train the same way in terms of numbers of routines and, you know, in terms of, you know, physically the same way, and they still do put importance on pressure sets and things like that, you know, do you think it will, do you think the team will be as confident under pressure, you know, at these upcoming world championships? You know, what do you expect from the performance? Will there be a different performance? I mean, they obviously have the talent to go out there and win. You know, I mean, how do you prepare them for that moment in a positive way? Well, I think we have to trust the athletes that they're, they're the ones who want it. And they're the ones who are going to put the pressure on themselves. 
the athletes put the most pressure on themselves out of everybody. Believe you me. I, I, I mean, I can only use myself as an example because I went through it. But, like, no one wanted to hit those routines more than I did. No one was more disappointed if I screwed up than I was. And so I think it's the coach's job to, like, put the athlete in those situations where it's like, okay, this is the one where you have to do it so that as the athlete you get those feelings because they're, they're different feelings when the pressure's on. You know, your hands are a little bit shaky. Your mouth gets a little bit dry. Your heart starts to pound a little bit more. But I think we have to trust that the athletes are the ones that want to be great. They're not, they're not the pawns in this game. And I think that that's kind of what it was before was they were replaceable and now I think it's like we have to holistically um, nurture them we have to be like you're important whether you hit your routines or you don't and then I think that kind of takes away that fear-based um, mentality I don't I think you can be great without being afraid of being bad <laughs> like I think greatness comes from within and we need to like figure out ways to nurture that within these athletes and give them every tool and every resource, you know, give them the nutritionist so that they are eating right and they're fueling their bodies. Give them the sports psychologist so that they know how to do that deep breathing and that visualization and have those keywords and they know how to trust themselves in those big time situations. We need to give them the recovery, the physiotherapists. We need to give them, um, you know, the, the massage therapists. We need to give them, uh, like the chiropractors, all of these people, we need to like give them that whole toolkit so that they can go into those competitions being as mentally, physically, and emotionally prepared as they can be. That That's what I think the approach needs to be. And at the end of the day, you know what? It's just gymnastics. It is. And, and it can't be a win at all costs because it one day it does end. And then you want to have happy and healthy athletes as they move forward so they can contribute back to the sport. I think also it's interesting you know, they, they act as though Marta never lost, but she actually did lose a number of competitions, even as the coordinator in the U.S. competitions that they were maybe expected to win. So it's, you know, her method may not have always been the right way. In 2004, right. the team had so much depth and, you know, they didn't perform well under pressure. And you have to wonder, you know, if her, you know, was it as detrimental as it was positive? Those athletes probably could have won, you know, with a number of people doing that job. So I think that's interesting. With the circumstances that have been going on in the States, I've been thinking a lot about like my interactions with the with the women, with the coaches, with Marta. And like one of the distinct memories I have, actually there's two that are pretty funny. In 2007, I broke my legs at the World Championships. And I was friends with, Nas, with Nasia and I knew um, like Alicia. And um, <clears throat> so I'm sitting there in a wheelchair and like I'm talking to the girls. And Marta comes up and she's like, okay, girls, time to go. Like, she wouldn't even let them talk to me because it was this mentality of, like, weakness. That I had broken my legs and, like, I was sitting there and, like, they couldn't talk to boys and this broken boy. And poof, she got them out of there really quick. And then I remember being on the bus on the way to training one day in, in Beijing. And I was like, hey, how's it going? And, like, no one would talk to me. They just stood there because Marta was right there. And they were, they were like, too afraid to even talk to a friend on the bus. And so those those interactions, and like I was, I wasn't really afraid of Marta, but in a way she kind of creates this thing where like it's untouchable. Like these are her girls and you can't talk to them and you can't, you know, um, it was a control. You know, there was, there was a lot of that control. And so, yeah, I hope that as, as the system moves forward that like there can be, there can just be more joy and more more ability to like, be a person and interact with people and not just be a gymnast 100% of the time. Yeah, I think it determines how you know athletes are motivated. I've had bosses that are control freaks and then I've had bosses that demand excellence, but maybe they're not on you every second of the day. They trust you to be an adult. I think that that'll be interesting. Now, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about Riley McCusker, who did, had a really good competition this weekend. We were talking about mental preparation and I, I wanted your take. So a year ago, Riley was kind of labeled a head case because she had a rough competition at the American Cup. And if you didn't see it, NBC will remind you of this. Every time she competes, they will re-show her being... Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> and you know, that, was kind of a, that was kind of a plum assignment for her to get relatively early in her career. She had only been to one junior national championship. She you know, was an up-and-comer and was kind of put on the American Cup stage probably before maybe she was ready or you know, naturally would have been had there been more depth in a non-Olympic year. No, you know, not the year after the Olympics, rather. So I was wondering for you, now that she's doing well, are you surprised? You know, there are so many people that still expect her to be, you know, making mistakes all the time. You know, where do you think she is in her progression? 
I think she looks great. great. I felt so proud of her as a fan of the sport to see that she put together at the U.S. Classic and at, at um, U.S. Championships really awesome routines. She was super solid. She hit eight for eight at U.S. Championships. And what I what I look for in the athletes is I look in their eyes and I look for that fear. And or when they're standing ready for a routine, what are they doing? Are they like pacing and looking around or are they just present? And she seemed so present and she seemed so sure of herself. And it looked to me like she had done the numbers. And I think that putting her on that assignment in 2017 for the American Cup, there was a bit of expectation, right? I mean, she does have gorgeous lines. Her, there's no there's no leg extension like Riley McCusker in the world right now. The way her toe points, it is something of magnificence. And I think that she, you know, you, you don't know how to play the game until you're in it. And sometimes you got to make mistakes. And like we got to, I think as, as gymnastic fans and as broadcaster, I ha- we have to be lenient. Of, we got to like just let these people make their mistakes and have their learning opportunities. And I think that Riley McCusker is someone who I actually, I think is going to go even further. I think her bars has more potential. I think her beam has more potential. And you can see in her tumbling, she's even getting more powerful. I can see um, her in her legs, like her her muscular build in her leg is, is, is building up. And she seems to be getting more and more powerful. She used to be very frail looking to me, whereas now she seems like very athletic and very strong, which I like to see. So yes, she, she, she's very impressive to me. And I think that um, as we progress, I, I don't think we have, we, I don't think we have to worry about her being someone that is mentally unstable. I think that once she gets the numbers in and she's going to build confidence and that's where confidence comes from is each time you hit, you, you have to be in those big pressure situations in order to learn how to trust yourself. You really do. I thought it was interesting on uh, encouraging that um, on the first night of competition, it looked like she was a little bit nervous when she was competing, but she only made little mistakes. You know, they were, there were no big errors. It looked like she was fighting through the nerves rather than just having, you know, that fantastic day. So I thought that was um, encouraging. Um, you talked about leg line, and I just wanted to ask you about Simone briefly. So that's the only thing that I don't think looks maybe quite as good is Simone's extension in her legs doesn't look as good as it was two years ago. Do you think that's just time off? I mean, she's also a little bit slimmer than she was then, so then her feet look bigger than they were compared. What do you think is going on there? <laughs> it's just like my OCD. I've I think, noticed. Yeah, I think you're overanalyzing this. I mean, I've been out of gymnastics for ten years, and I could still, I could still point my toes, right? Like it. I don't think your toe line goes away too much. But I mean, Simone does look. I I don't want to use the word thinner. I hate that word. I think she looks healthier. I think she looks, um, she looks leaner, and she looks more athletic. Like she, her body is just. She's a little machine, and I think that I've wa- I watched I've watched a lot of Simone's routines and the way that she does gymnastics, and she is a bit flat-footed. Like when she's on beam, she's not up on her toes like a Sunny Waivers would be, or like even a, a Liam Mustafa. Like she has a different style where she's landing a bit more flat-footed. She's she's not a ballerina, and I think I don't expect. Simone Biles to be a ballerina because she's a powerhouse. To me, she's like a Usain Bolt. She's a sprinter. She's a power athlete. She's not the elegant artistic athlete. And so I'm not putting her in that box. So I think my expectation is a little bit different. But I, I, you know, just watching her on bars, I would disagree. I think her extension is better. I think her leg line is better. I think that the handstands, oh, beam, beam is where you're kind of referring. Yeah. Yeah. On the, some of the leaps and stuff, I kind of notice it more now than I did before. I don't know why that is, but maybe right. it's because we have nothing else to look at that we, you know, that we, you right. know, she was a little wobbly in the beats leading up to the Olympics on beam. So maybe there's yeah. just more. <laughs> well, and I think Simone is someone, especially because she's at the top and she's so far ahead of everybody else. It's really easy to be a bit nitpicky with her on little things like that um, because She's heads above the rest in terms of difficulty. So then we kind of go insular and we look like a one le- level deeper. Um, I think though, like knowing who her coaches are, they they see it. Mm-hmm. Cecile is going to be trying to get every every centimeter or if you guys, every inch of of extension and length in those feet and the knees. Because when you're that great the small incremental improvements are what you're looking for, right? When you know you're going to beat the rest of the world by three points, 
you're trying to beat yourself and you're trying to constantly improve. Yeah, I, I, I do have other things that I nitpick in other athletes. In general, wolf turns, I'm over it. I wonder how they survived the, the change in the code of points. I don't really understand how those lasted. Um, yeah, me neither. I think they're, uh, they're, they're fugly, man. And, and, but they're super hard. Like, I don't know, I, I've tried one on the floor once, and I basically got half a turnaround. I don't even know how to get one started, but I think there should be a limit. You should be able to just do one, and I don't think you should be able to do them on floor. Yeah. And then the other thing is these straight leg leaps that we're seeing on beam, and the athletes never actually hit a full split in them. And those are right. the strangest things. To me, they almost look like the athletes jumping over a sandbox. Like, it, they're never hitting a full <laughs> split. It's not – like, it was probably really good in theory, but it, it's an excellent – when Riley McCusker, Car Eager, and all of these very talented gymnasts can't seem to do them, I think there's a, a little bit mm -hmm. of a problem in the code. But, but do, you, do, you do you feel, feel like there's a little bit of – like, like – okay, so Sonia Wiggers is my best example of someone that's using – I call her, like, she's – She's historic in terms. I, I feel like she could go back into 1976 and compete on balance beam against like Nadia and against like um, Elvira Saudi and the, the greats like that. Just because it is very, the tempo is really nice and it all flows together. Kara Eker actually did that really, really well. I find the little hold of the leg after the, you know, after one of her elements, she holds the leg and then goes in. And that to me is the way balance beam should be. I don't like the choppiness. Skill, 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 skill. I think mean, people are still trying to figure it out, but hey, look at Worlds last year in, in Montreal. Everybody got hammered on on all their beam skills. Like the execution scores are very low, so we'll see how that all works out. I do like the, the the theory of it though. Like doing a simple split leap and doing it beautifully is much more impressive to me than doing a standing back fall. Yeah, maybe it's just elements, that they're all right? doing them, but they're not doing them well. Maybe they need to hammer the execution more until we see everyone look like Sana Weaver. But um. I wanted to know a little bit about Riley McCusker. So they talked about her cr her crunching into the horse on vault. Now, she's improved right. a lot on vault from last year to this year. And then we see her on Instagram, and it's hard. You can't really slow down the videos as much. Um, how, you know, how big of a problem is that to fix? You know, how fixable is it in a short amount of time? You know, how, what do you think, you know, what does it take to kind of straighten those arms? Well, I think her double twisting your chanko was something that's quite new to her repertoire. I mean, she hasn't been performing it for six years like Simone's been doing the, the Aminar. I don't think an Aminar is something that Ryan McCusker is aiming for either. I think a double twisting your chanko is the vault that she'll be performing. So I think that incrementally it will get better over time. The more confident she becomes, the more time she competes it on that hard surface, the more they perform work on it and train it. But right now they're in a competition phase, right? It's not time to like go and change your technique on something like that. It's just hone it in. Um, I know most athletes who stand at the end of that vault runway, like they're thinking quick round off, arms up and get them blocked onto the table as quick as you possibly can. But I think sometimes you can rush it, especially when it's a new vault. Like I remember being a kid and like running as fast as I possibly could and sometimes going in and hitting the vault like that and only be able, being able to pull out a, a full twist in your jankle rather than a double twist because you're just trying so hard to get your arms back. So I think it comes with time and it comes with experience. And um, as my coach, Kelly Manjack, would always say, it comes with mastery. The more you do it, the more numbers you put in, the more you master the skill and the more your body understands the little subtleties of it. So I, I think she's got time. I don't think we need to worry about it. And I think that um, her double twisting your jingle, I, I, I watched it over several times. It, it's actually quite good. I mean, she, she always gets it around. We know Maggie is detail oriented. Are you following Maggie on Instagram and all of those girls on bars constantly with what she is doing? What is she doing with their lines that they look that good on bars? Every single person from their gym from level six on, you can see. And, and right. she'll show you on Instagram every day just how good they are working bars constantly. Well, I'll tell you what. It's not, it doesn't just happen overnight. It's every day showing up and being committed to getting those body positions, being committed to create that little extra bit of extension. I think that's, that, and I think that's cool that a coach is willing to share that. That's what makes an athlete great is showing up every day and looking to be a little bit better than you were the day before. Mm -hmm. now, what did you make of Morgan Hurd's competition here? Obviously, she has a little bit of the wind knocked out of her sails with Simone coming back and all of that focus and Simone's D score being, you know, what it is. But, you know, she mm -hmm. was much stronger, you know, performance wise this year than she was last year at championships. So, you know, what'd you make of her performance? 
I, I see maturity in her that she didn't have last year. I see a confidence in her. She still, I mean, appears to be very fun, loving, and bubbly. Uh, she, I love how she's like very serious when she's in the routine, and then when she's done, she like, is kind of laughing and joking with her teammates. I'm a big fan of Morgan Hurd. I think that she's a good personality for the sport. I think just her ability to not take herself too seriously. Um, her her likes outside of the sport, I think, give her more character, and I think the sport needs less robots and more characters. And so I'm I'm a big fan of hers. And I think it's unfortunate to be in the era of Simone Biles because your greatness doesn't really you you never compare because Simone is like she's the goat, right? Greatest of all time. And the difficulty, I don't think anyone in the world will ever match what Simone Biles is doing. Unless the equipment gets changed, but Morgan is, just has that unfortunate timing where she is sort of overshadowed by that. But I think she's a great athlete, and I think that's she's someone that's certainly in the top top six in the world. You know, I mean, she's top three in the world. Let's face it; she's 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 well rounded across all the, all the events. So you mentioned the goat with Simone, mm-hmm. and I was wondering, you know, we're comparing errors here, comparing many different factors. Do you compare Simone to the GOAT? I mean, I, I wonder about this sometimes. I think she's the best optional gymnast mm-hmm. we've ever seen. But then you start to compare, you know, compulsories, optionals, you know, levels of depth, different all sorts of stuff. You know, how do you kind of reconcile that in your mind? I think the media is very quick to attach that label because everyone loves a, a superlative. But I was wondering, I mean, could Simone, she's not a finesse athlete. You look back at all the compulsories, you look back at, you know, what made those athletes great? And maybe it wasn't the number of flips that they did, but, you know, other qualities that were emphasized before. Mm-hmm. Really good point. I think Simone is the greatest of all time based on her level of difficulty, based on, and, and her natural ability to do gymnastics. Like, a double-twisting double-back at the end of a routine after doing all that she does in it, double-twisting double layout from full to full in, the vials and then a double double like that's a lot of tumbling my i mean that hurts that doesn't no matter who you are that at the end of a routine your lungs are burning and your legs are tired um and i think that simone in my opinion is considered the greatest of all time because of that level of difficulty the way she does the skills like it, it she just makes it look so easy also her ability to perform when the pressure's on like at the olympics she had the pressure of the world on her shoulders and she delivered and so I think all that comes into play. She's not Svetlana Boganskaya. She's not Daniela Silavash, right? She's not Lilia Pokopaeva. But during those eras, that was just different. And I don't think you can take someone from now and put them back then because I don't think that those athletes would be able to compare to Simone in today's era. So I think she's the greatest of I think she's the greatest of all time in terms of her difficulty level, but I think she's just right now, she's the greatest of this era. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. too. I think it's so, the sport is so different that it's so hard to compare in certain you know ways. I think definitely difficulty wise, as you say, you know, you bring up the double double at the end. I think it's hard to imagine athletes, you know, who never did compulsories having to do compulsories, but that doesn't mean that they can't do them or couldn't do them. So, mm-hmm. um, what do you make of Reagan Smith? You know, she seems like she's a injured here, a little bit of a crossroads probably in her career. You know, mm-hmm. seventeen years old, eighteen. You know, wondering. Do you go to college? Do you, you know, push for 2020? You know, you know, where'd you kind of see her, you know, right now? Well, it was really unfortunate, wasn't it, at Worlds for her to hurt her ankle in the warm-up. I know that we were like, what? It was really, really sad. It was really sad because that was her, that was when she was at her peak. And I always want to see an athlete at their peak perform in, in that moment and get to have that moment. And I think that since then, it's been a big journey, a big a big battle for her. And having an ankle injury, it's always there. Every time you get out of bed in the morning, you feel it. Every time you walk up or down a set of stairs, you feel it. You can't get away from it. And so that starts to play on you mentally, and you can only be positive for so long. Um, I think that she did a great job of getting back to where she is. Um, I think that there's more from right now. I think right now she's... She's not feeling physically 100%, and therefore her confidence is down. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't write her off, and I think that 
she's she's just such a she i've had the opportunity to talk to kim a lot and reagan is just like such a wide-eyed wonder you know she's such a wonderful young person who sees the possibility in moments and i think that in co- if she goes if she decides to go the college route right away like if that was something she chose to do i think she'd excel there um, but i think she's got a little more elite left in her her balance beam is is really incredible when she's on if she's looking at worlds this year, do you think maybe she should try to specialize on certain events? You know, rest the ankle, would it even matter? I hate to put thoughts into people's minds, but I think that she needs to, I, I would say that the worlds this year is just not worth it. Um, I think that the team is going to come top three regardless. I think they're going to get that Olympic qualification and that's the goal. And I think for her, she needs to think a bit longer term and say, okay, you know what? Like, my ankle was heavily taped at nationals. I'm hurting. And now just take that step back and do more rehab so that you can feel great. Because gymnastics, when you when your body feels good, is fun. Gymnastics, when your body hurts, is like it's like a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Now, you talked about, about the team. So it looks like the top three will obviously uh, go. Uh, Simone, Morgan, Hurd, and Riley. And then mm-hmm. the, you know there are two more spots, really, up at stake. Obviously, you know, Jade Carey has a very good shot uh, with medals last year, you know, and strengths on vault and floor. Would you take an athlete then that was better on bars and beam, or would you take maybe someone like Jordan Chiles who could kind of, you know, be, you know, having two strong vaults? What, you know, what would your strategy be? Mm, strategy. <laughs> well, I think that Jade Carey is going to be on the team for Worlds based on her ability to medal on vault. She didn't perform her most difficult vaults here, but it's pretty clear to me she's going to be able to do the Aminar, and she's working on the chain, right? Like that half on front leg half that she did, she could have an extra full in there for sure. So I think that she's going to aim for vault finals, and I think on floor, I mean, I think we're going to get to her artistry, but her tumbling is, it's huge. And so that's where she's usable. I was also impressed with her. She, she can go up on beam. She could be the fourth up and have that security score. She seems to me to be a very, um, a very focused competitor. She doesn't seem to be too afraid of competing on beam. So um, she, she would be on the team, in my opinion, based on her floor and ball scores. But Jordan, I, I enjoy her. I think she's really fun to watch. I think she's like kind of wild. And um, she's someone who I'm excited to watch in the college um, environment, especially. I think she's going to have a really rocking floor routine. But I don't, she's not on my world team. I don't think that – I think someone like a Kara Eaker or someone like a Grace McCallum or a, even like if Emma Malibuyo can um, get healthy or Miley, I think – there's there's a lot of athletes that could take that spot to fill in, but the reality is, no matter who you put in, the Americans are still going to be the best team in the world. I just think they're unbeatable right now. How about Trinity Thomas? So she just went away to school, and she mm-hmm. has such a strong performance here. It feels like it. It feels like her elite career is almost resurging. You know, if she <laughs> with right? the right instructor, it seems like Trinity could be right up there with some of the best. I mean, yeah, you know. I think she's someone for Worlds, too. Right? right? You know, it's, yeah. Uh, it's so hard, though, because now it seems like the time for her to strive for Worlds and at the same time. I don't know. When I started you know, college, that was definitely not the time I'd want to be thinking about <laughs> any of that. So, Well, you talk to an athlete like a Brittany Rogers, who's done the elite and the college at the same time, and it's grueling. It's grueling. And you're, you've got to compete a lot, and your obligation is to your school. Um, I know that Florida is supporting her in, in her elite endeavors, but man, it, that would be a long year for her to compete at Worlds and to do all that. But hey, good on her if, if that's something that she wants. And she certainly does fill some gaps. She's very reliable across the board. And her bars does bring something special to the American team. But um, if, if, if it was my decision, I'd say go to college, have fun, go to parties, have the best college experience you absolutely possibly can. And I just think the elite, the elite stuff is just too big of a commitment to tie into a first year being a freshman in university. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you think that makes Grace McCallum look like a more uh, viable option, definitely for the worlds there. Now you mentioned artistry with Jade. So what is your take, I guess, on 
her artistry since you wanted to bring it up. So, <laughs> <laughs> what's, 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 should I ask you, what's your take Well, you there? already, I already was the one who was nitpicky before for things right, like memes. Right. So I'll let you take this one. Um, yeah. I would say that her floor does stand out for a lack of artistry. You know, there mm -hmm. certainly seems like that wasn't developed early yeah. on in her you know, I'm not, and I always try to build up the athlete. This is nothing of her, this is not anything against Jade as an athlete. I think she's incredible. Her tumbling, I'm like, please, I'd love to be able to do what you could do. That double twisting double layout is huge. But if there are rules for artistry, and if that deduction is going to be taken, I think that Jade would be the person who, as myself as the judge, would take that artistry deduction. I think her routine is just, it's posing. And there's no fluidity. There's no connection. There's no storytelling. There's, it's just, it's background music and a bunch of poses. And, but that, her personality, you know, I've never had the opportunity to meet her, but I think she's a little more insular. She's a little shyer. She's not the big bubbly gymnast that's going to be like shaking up there and getting the audience involved. So um, they're doing the best they can with the resources that they have, but I think at the end of the day, if it was me to make the call as a judge, I would take an artistry deduction because you have to set the standard somewhere. And to me, it's it is it's just poses, and I know she's working on it. I can tell, like she changed her routine it's better than it was last year at Worlds, um, certainly, and she is opening up, and her shoulders are coming a little bit down, but. I don't want, I'm not trying to be harsh here against Jade. I'm trying to be against the rules. I think the artistry deduction should be taken for someone who performs with the lack of artistry that she does. Yeah, I think definitely as they have more training camps and you know they have more opportunity to bring in specialists and certain, that's definitely something that she'll have to work on because I think that she's an athlete that's definitely um, quite viable for the Olympics. So I think that that's something to focus on for the next two years because it does look like she has most of the tumbling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, which junior stood out to you? Did anyone, you know, really excite you here this weekend? So I kind of have this rule. I try not to get too excited about juniors because I know that there's a long road for them and I don't want to place too much expectation and pressure on their shoulders. But, I mean, the gauge... The Gage gymnasts, they're just, they really are beautiful. I, I'm Courtney McCool is, McCool is someone that I always really enjoyed watching, and she was a buddy of mine. And I just I see that style in all the athletes. Just their, it's that extra second that they take before the skill. That like that confident second where I own this, or on their floor routines where they look up and they um, extend their finger for an extra millisecond. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm I'm very impressed with the Gage girls. Uh, how about yourself? Well, obviously Sunisa Lee is really good on bars and beam, but I think oh, yeah, what right. I uh, and Jeffrey Scott from Gage I think has a lot of talent. You know, injured this week, but I think I'm interested with Kelly Hills uh, Junior. Kayla Ducello, because I think you know she did show a really great vault here. She's very good on bars, but mm -hmm. she was not doing anything super super remarkable in her routines. But it just had really you know, clean tech, you know, good technique, Stop. clean execution, mm -hmm. but mentally she was so prepared and strong from event to event to event. And you see that confidence building, yeah. you know, and Kelly really has a track record of doing that with mm -hmm. athletes. So I think I'm curious to see that development on the line. You know, it's interesting. My, so Kelly, Kelly Magic, my, my coach when I was training, it was when you're a junior, your job is to learn how to compete and you should be doing routines that aren't questionable, that aren't like, you're not standing there going, am I going to make it? You should be able to say, I will make every skill in this routine 100% confidently. And I think that's the approach that they're taking. And the difficulty will be added and it will come. What I noticed, especially on bars for the juniors, I could actually see Valerie's influence. A lot of their bars is looking very nasty-like to me. Those really extended handstands, the way that they do their pirouettes. Look at, there's my hands. Ah! The way that they're doing their pirouettes on the front side of the bar. Like it's, I can see... There's more attention paid. It's not it's not muscle bars. It's like swinging bars. And so I noticed that was consistent amongst most of the, the top junior competitors. So will you be commentating at the World Championships this coming year? I'm going to be doing the Canadian coverage, yes. I'm, we don't actually do it from – I'm not going to be going to Doha. Um, we'll be doing it from Toronto. But, yes, I will be 
I will be calling some gymnastics. It's going to be very fun. <laughs> yeah, so I was wondering, if, you know, what do you think about the fact that Valeri Liukin is obviously working with Brazil right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Chow, uh, who coached Gabby and Sean Johnson, is now with China. And, right. you know, the Russians have, you know, so many comebacks. You know, Alexiev is also there. Do you see it becoming more competitive, you know, around the world? Do you think that it, it may not just be the U.S. and everyone else? Do you think that, you know, having so many top coaches could make things more exciting? I sure hope so. I love a competition where you don't know who's going to win at the beginning of it. Um, it's, it's like women's hockey, Canada and the U.S. are always going to be in that gold medal game. And no disrespect, but it kind of gets like... The game is really fun, but in the lead-up, it's a little bit boring because you're like, well, they're going to crush everybody, right? So I, I like it. I My favorite time in gymnastics is, is the 80s and 90s when there was like 20 women that could actually challenge for the top six, right? There was 10 women that could challenge for those top three placings, and if you had a mistake, it actually mattered. So that's the place that I want gymnastics to be again. Um, I want the difficulty to come down a bit. I want the execution to be a little bit of more importance, and I want there to be more characters so that we can start to feel like it's more of like a it's more like a like a show, you know? It's like a drama. Like you're like, who's gonna win today? I I like commentating that when you don't know at the beginning who's gonna win. Yeah, I, I know in the U.S. it's very exciting that everyone keeps winning, but when you actually watch the competitions, you know, at the Olympics, I found the Olympic trials to be a lot more exciting than the actual Olympics. I found that it, it was kind of a bit boring. You know, at the, at the moment, it, it was a letdown of sorts, I thought, you know, at the end of the day. so Yeah, you feel like the, the story's already written, right? And, and then it just starts to play out. But yes, I, I certainly hope that Brazil, and like, good on Brazil, man. They, they bring in Alexandrov, and now they have Liukin, and they're seeing these opportunities to help improve their programs and their athletes. I think that's really, really smart of them. And then for China, I thought that was really interesting to have Chow come to China because I know that they're, they don't typically bring in like foreign, co but they brought in like um, Adriana Pop to do their choreography and stuff. So they're becoming more open minded. And I guess at the end of the day, um, Chow was on the Chinese national team as well. Yeah, I'll be curious to see what happens. So we'll be definitely watching and look forward to hearing your coverage in the, in the coming weeks. So thanks so much, Kyle. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.